Maybe's 2020 is upon us. I tried to say that like Vince McMahon used to say it. And once again, World Wrestling Entertainment did pull the rug out from underneath us at the last second, because we ain't getting Roman Reigns versus Randy Elton anymore. Drew McIntyre is the new Raw World Champion. So now he is going to be taking on the Tribal Tree. And Jew, if you do watch these, which obviously you don't, but if you do, you've got to be careful. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Roman, he got all kinds of crazy. It's probably going to make you eat jail so. But on paper, it is a very interesting card and it could go in multiple directions. So let's stand here as we stand right now and take our brains and try and predict what's going to happen at the WWE Survivor Series. Series. And make sure you get in those comments and predict it as well. My name's Simon Miller, it's What Culture Wrestling. Let's do exactly that. We shall start off with a traditional Survivor Series matchup when it is the women from Team Raw going against the women from Team SmackDown. And because of the way that these videos work, we don't even know who the last couple of people on Team SmackDown are going to be. We're going to have to wait till SmackDown until that happens. But on the blue brand, we are going to have Bianca Belair, Ruby Wright, and Liv Morgan and two other people taking on the red brand, which of course is going to be Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lana, Peyton Royce, and Lacey Evans, the Southern Bill. Now really, the idea of these matches is usually just shine a spotlight on somebody to take them up to the next level. And if that is the case, surely we have to be doing this for Bianca Belair. She's kind of been to in and fro and coming and going from SmackDown, which makes no sense because we had all those cool vignettes and she's proven time and time and again in the ring. She's really good and she's got a character. It's time to pull the trigger. So basically, she should eliminate as many people as possible. You don't have to do all five, but would I say at least three? You bet your ass. And you've already got a built-in narrative because everybody on Team Raw hates each other. Even the tag team champions, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, they don't like each other either. So if you want them all to fall out, it's like, yeah, at each other and then take Lana and put her through the table, you can absolutely do that. However, shock horror, spin twist, what I actually think is going to happen is this is where Lana's going to lose her mind, she's going to go crazy, and she is going to put Nia through the wood instead. And then you're going to watch it and go, really? That was the payoff? Because no offense to Lana, but this was meant to be some kind of babyface turn and it didn't work. She just looks so dumb. Do you remember Raw when Lana was like, oh, I love you now, and Lana's like, oh, I'm so happy, and then bam. She went through it again, moron. But outside of that, there's not too much going on here, depending on who those last two people are. But they are my major takeaways. Ensure that Nia Jax, Shona Bowes, and everybody else fall out. Ensure that Bianca Belair feels like an even bigger star on the other end of this. And then you would have done your job. Because let's face it, when we get to all the TV programs, after this pay-per-view, we're going to go off in different directions anyway. Survivor Series never has any lasting effect. So do that. And then we move on to the men's version of this, which actually is telling the exact same story as the women's, because all these guys hate each other as well, especially Team Raw. Does that not just confuse anybody else? Why couldn't we have come up with something different? But Team SmackDown is going to be Kevin Owens, Jay Uso, Seth Rollins, Baron Corbin, and somebody else will find that again on Friday. And Team Raw is going to be Braun Strowman, because he shouts everything, Riddle, Keith Lee, Sheamus, and AJ Styles. And once again, there is somebody in this that surely has to get more of a rub than anybody else. And kind of surprisingly, that should be Sheamus. This, of course, works out very well, because if in the women's matchup, Team SmackDown's going to win, you want Team Raw to win on this one just to balance it out. That's what WWE and Vince McMahon loves to do. But we have been teasing over the last few weeks that Sheamus is best friends with Drew McIntyre, and Drew McIntyre is best friends with Sheamus. But of course Sheamus doesn't like anyone. Go through his entire wrestling career. All he's ever done is either booted someone right in their face or stabbed them in the back. Other than maybe Cesaro, but that is the exception to the rule. And after Survivor Series, once again, Drew McIntyre is going to need opponents. He needs feuds. So surely, Sheamus has to win here. He then instantly feels like a major deal and a contender because he just beat like nine other dudes because he's obviously going to turn on Team Raw. That's what he'll do. And then he can go into a world title program with Drew McIntyre. Now, he's not going to win the belt. That'll probably just take us through to the Royal Rumble, but that's fine. As a man that lives over here on these shows, getting to see those two get at it would make me very happy. You can also set up some other things as well because Jey Uso and Kevin Owens have got something going on. Maybe the last guy is going to be Daniel Bryan. So coming out of the Survivor Series, you have Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan going against Jey Uso and Roman Reigns and KO and B. Bry did say they'd love to be a tag team and give it a go. And the other rumor is that Seth Rollins is taking a break after this pay-per-view to go and have his new child with Becky Lynch, which is far more important than wrestling, of course. But that means you can write him off here too. He don't need to win. I bet you Braun Strowman and Keith Lee also have a little something and then whatever the December pay-per-view is, those two will go at it. And poor AJ Styles as we sit there in the corner going, man, I tried to be a leader. I tried to be a proud dad, and look what all of these buffoons did. 
then he too will fall out of riddle, then there's that program, and then you can come back and watch this video and go, Miller, how the hell did you call that? Point being, Team Raw wins, Sheamus is probably the last survivor, or at least one of them. We then move on to the Champions versus Championship matches, even though none of the belts are actually on the line, and we're getting the Street Profits versus the New Day. And I tell you, on paper, I think this could be pretty damn fabu. Even if it had been the Hurt Business in that slot, it would have been pretty damn good. But surely these two teams are going to mesh up so well. And while I'm 99% sure they have had a match before, right now as I stand here, I can't remember it. So that makes me even more excited. And really, the Street Profits should win. Like at this point, the New Day are so established, they've been around for so long, they're always going to be a top tier act. Whereas the Street Profits, they need a major victory so they can start walking around like, hey ho, I told you we were proper champions. Look who the hell we have just defeated. And then if you want to come back to that, maybe around WrestleMania time, and maybe even sort of let the New Day get a win, I'd be into that. There's something here, I tell you, I can smell it. No shenanigans though, no gaga. I know that Big E has been falling out with Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins. Just leave him out of this entirely. In fact, don't even have Big E on SmackDown at all, unless he's going to be in that last slot on the men's Team Survivor Series matchup. Otherwise, no, he doesn't need it. We need clean winners, and this is the perfect time to do it. No one is going to think that Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are rubbish now, just because they suffer a loss to, by the way, a couple of dudes who are meant to be champions. So I want to see Montez Ford do that amazing frog splash on Xavier Woods or Kofi Kingston or whoever. I don't care, and I want them to get the one, two, three. And as we are here talking about the New Day, those guys just got put into Gears of War. As if I couldn't like them anymore, Gears of War is flipping brilliant. And then we're going to get a murder. Because we're going to get Bobby Lashley, the US champion, taking on Sami Zayn, the IC champion. And while I do think Mr. Zayn is one of the most underrated and underused characters, in all of wrestling, but just go look at how WWE has used Bobby Lashley recently. He runs through everyone. Even when he gets punches in blinks, he just looks at them like, how dare you touch me, the almighty Bobby Lashley. So I worry this could go about 10 seconds and he tacks out to the hurt point lock thing, whatever the hell it's called. The exception to this rule is that maybe the reason Sami Zayn beat Apollo Crews using shenanigans on SmackDown is because that's going to be his new gimmick. So maybe he tries to do something to Bobby Lashley here and that extends it a bit, but I'm very confident with this one. I think Bobby Lashley will win and I don't think it's going to go very long. And Sami Zayn will moan about it on Friday. He'll go into a feud with Apollo Crews and as for Lashley, I don't know, he'll beat R-Truth and Titus O'Neil again, but this time in a two-on-one match just because, again, everybody has to bow down to Bobby Lashley. In what could be the match of the night as well, we have the Raw Women's Champion Sasha Banks taking on the SmackDown Women's Champions Oscar. I don't understand the criticism. So many people go, well, I've seen this loads in 2020. Yeah, I bet you've eaten a load of ice cream as well. Do you open up another pot and go, well, I don't want any more now? No, you don't. You take your face in it and you just smash it all around because ice cream is the best thing ever. And seeing Sasha Banks and Oscar, even if they did it every day, you can get something out of this. And the only problem with this one is that WWE has so many opportunities to bring in Gaga, they're 99% probably going to do it because you've got Bailey and you've got Carmella and you've got a bunch of other people. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that at all. I want this to be pitched as proper best versus the best, which is the tagline. And somebody wins, but only by like this much. And then the other person can be like, oh my gosh. And again, they don't actually feel like a loser and you can run it again down the line. If this finishes because Carmella comes out going, oh man, I want a shot SmackDown Women's title, then Oscar just taps Sasha Banks out. Well, who cares? What have we achieved? Nothing. I already know Sasha Banks is pissed off at Carmella. I would keep this so far away, but it ain't gonna happen. And because of that, I think Oscar will win, which is great. Oscar is probably one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestler in the company, but it's not gonna mean the same when somebody just makes a noise and other wrestlers are like, oh, there's a noise, and then probably gets surprised roll up, the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment for the one, two, three. And you can also hear Bailey saying in her head, she will come out and say, see, Sasha, I told you, you weren't able to beat Oscar without me, and also, really, you should have lost your title. You suck at long title rates. I won't enjoy any of that, but you know, if you watch WWE and then they do that, who you got to blame? Nobody but yourself. Which brings us to the main event of the brand new Raw WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre, taking on the SmackDown Universal Champ, Roman Reigns. And boy, howdy, am I excited about this, even though, once again, I can see shenanigans. Because there ain't no way that Vince McMahon wants Drew McIntyre to lose, especially since he only beat Randy Orton a few days ago. And Roman Reigns, a tribal chief, oh, we love you. He can't lose right now. That would destroy his utter gimmick. So who do we have in our back pocket? That's right, it's The Miz and his money in the bank briefcase. Imagine I pulled out The Miz just then 
you would have been amazed. So would I. Because no one's going to mind if The Miz loses here. I mean, apart from maybe John Morrison and The Miz's mum. He can come out, cash in his briefcase. That turns it into a triple threat match like WrestleMania 31 when Seth did it. Then Drew McIntyre can claim or kick him in the face and pin The Miz. And that still does make sense because they've been having a mini program on Monday nights. Roman can then be all like, oh, I knew you could never beat me, Drew McIntyre. You can't eat at my table. Maybe they can have a little bit of a fisty cuff and you can tease that for WrestleMania or another show down the line when you actually do get a proper winner and all of this works for me again it's a lot of nonsense but what did i just say about wwe they wanted to change their name to world wrestling nonsense i don't think anyone's going to complain i know it kind of sucks if wwe did give a clean finish it would just have so much impact especially if drew did beat roman and man i hope i'm wrong i hope i got egg all over my face that i can lick off and get the extra protein but yeah miz cashes in and if you want one more oh my gosh i can't believe it maybe you even said otis out there because it is a dual brand pay-per-view he can then distract the miz then the miz loses so he has something to complain about and otis who is meant to be a good guy by the way also got his revenge there you go it's all wrapped up in a nice little package which i apparently have just eaten so what i am basically saying is that we are in for a lot of ridiculousness come this sunday but will it be fun maybe maybe not i don't know we have to sit down and watch it and then of course up those downs now please do let us know your predictions in the comments below like the video share the video smash that subscribe button head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles follow what culture on twitter what culture wwe and watch more videos here on what culture wrestling my name is Simon from what culture if you are an avid watcher of these predictions videos you know i suck at this but i always give it my best shot i will see you soon